All right, let's look at exponential functions now. So again, we're going to kind of compare and contrast with geometric sequences. This is similar to what we did when we learned about linear functions. I don't know if you remember, we learned about arithmetic sequences and we tied how that was similar to linear functions. We went from arithmetic to linear functions. We're going to do the same thing now. You're going from geometric sequences to exponential functions. So uh, the form we're going to use is f of x equals a times b to the x power. Please note that the x, the variable x, is the exponent of b. All right? And a is going to be the y-intercept because it's always going to be 0, comma, a. All right? b is the constant ratio, which is similar to the common ratio in a geometric sequence. So geometric sequence, we call it r. Exponential function, it's going to be called the b. All right? But they basically are the same thing. The common ratio or the constant ratio mean the same thing as we build our exponential function. All right, so now let's look at some of the similarities and differences. Geometric sequence versus exponential functions. Domain, the input values. Geometric sequence, it's our n is our natural numbers. When you first learn how to count when you were a baby, right? One, two, three, four. Doesn't include zero. There's no zero. Starts with one, just the natural numbers. For exponential functions, the input values, the x value, could be any number. It's all real numbers. So it could be negative 3.675. It could be 7.12. It could be negative 2 thirds. All real numbers are good for the input value for exponential functions. The output value, well, it's a g of n with our geometric sequences. For exponential functions, it's going to be f of x. All right? Our common ratio um, is the r value, and that value could be positive or negative for geometric sequence. We're going to find an exponential functions that's going to be represented by the b. We're going to call it the constant ratio. But that value has to be a positive value, cannot be 0, cannot be a negative number, and it also can't be 1. All right, we'll look at that reason why later, but it can't be 1 either, okay, for it to be exponential. Y-intercept, there is no y-intercept for geometric sequence, right? It starts at n is 1, so it doesn't start on the, the y-axis, if you will, okay? Where exponential does have a y-intercept, it will always be 0, comma, a. Whatever this value is, that will be the y-intercept, all right? Reference point, uh, again, the first term value, n equals 1. g of 1 is usually a good reference point we use for a geometric sequence. And our reference point for exponential functions, a lot of it's going to be the y-intercept, which is when x is 0, it's going to be the a value. All right? Now, increasing, decreasing, or both. Geometric sequences, we've seen them that they're just increasing. We've seen them where they're just kind of decreasing. And we've seen them where they kind of go up, down, up, down, up, down, over and over. Because if the r value is negative, right, as you keep multiplying by a negative number, well, it becomes positive, then it's negative, then it's positive, then it's negative. So it goes back and forth, back and forth. Okay, so we've seen that with our geometric sequences. Um, I didn't put on here, we could have a, a situation where it's constant, like if, you multiply, if R was 1, it'd be the same number, so that would be a constant function. I just didn't put that down on this chart. Uh, with our exponentials, it's either going to be increasing or it's going to be decreasing. There's not going to be this up and down because the R value, in this case the B value, is going to be a positive number. Um, so there's, it's going to be either increasing function or it's going to be a decreasing function, one or the other. Then the graphs, we'll be looking at the graphs the next few days. Um, discrete graphs for our geometric sequences, right? Discrete points, because you can't have 1.5 as an n value. It's n is 1, it's 2, it's 3. Continuous curve for exponential function, again, because it includes all the real numbers for x. So it could be the negative 3.65, it could be 7.12. So that's why it's a continuous curve, all right? Okay, for today, I want you to be able to find the a value um, from the geometric sequence, and then I want you to write that sequence as an exponential function. So to do this, we're gonna divide the first value in the geometric sequence by the common ratio. So you can think about it, we know that it starts at one, like x is 1, but we want x is 0. So we need to go back one more 
but the geometric sequence it wasn't set up that way. So all we're going to do is we're going to divide by r. Think about that, right? 108 divided by 3, 36. 36 divided by 3, 12. 12 divided by 3 is 4. That was the start of our geometric sequence. But we're going to make this into an exponential function so we know we can have the input value be 0. So we have to divide 4 by 3, and we get 4 thirds, or we get 1.33. So that is our, um, our y-intercept. That's also our a value. Our a value is going to be this 1.33, or you can write it as 4 thirds. Okay? And our common ratio is now our, our constant ratio. So that's the same. That's the 3 that's inside the parentheses here. So we write this as f of x equals 4 thirds times 3 to the x power or you could wrote it as 1.33 times 3 to the x power. Okay, example 2, we know that r is 1 -third. That means my b value is going to be 1 -third. Okay, How do we figure out what a is? Well, we have to take 9 divided by 1 -third. Be careful. 9 divided by 1 -third. Remember, we don't divide by fractions. We multiply by the reciprocal. So it's going to be 9 times 3. So that's how we get a to be 27. So the y-intercept is actually 0, 27. That makes sense, right? Because this, this sequence was decreasing, so our exponential curve is also going to be decreasing as we go through. So our function equation is going to be f of x equals 27 times 1 third to the x value.